Okay, so here it is installing. Um, it's not, it doesn't take very long, and you can use the operating system while you, <laughs> you're doing your install, which is pretty impressive. Now, the only problem I'm going to have is booting back into this thing because of uh, my uh, grub setup in uh, Ubuntu. Actually, um, so I'm, I, I guess I'm going to have to do the grub routine for y'all if you're dual booting, but um, I need a different set of commands to get into this thing. And so I guess I'm going to mess with it. And I got a couple of broken setups anyway, but I'm probably not going to mess with those. I'm probably just going to do this. And I'm probably going to have to learn how to deal with the new um, Grub 2, unless in the version of Ubuntu I have, it's just Grub 1, which in that case won't be that hard to deal with. But it looks like by the extra entries on the boot menu that comes up when I when I first start the you know, thing up, it, it, I probably have Grub 2 on there, which is going to be a little more difficult to deal with. I might as well um, just you know, give a little intro to that and maybe make it a separate one. Okay, so this is going pretty decently fast. Again, again I'm just amazed. I'm thrilled with this thing. It, you know, I've got an X window without a problem. i got an internet connection without a problem. Uh, I haven't tested sound yet, and I haven't tested whether I could play a DVD from a fresh install. And uh, as you can see from up there, it says Haiku 650 megabytes. That uh, even though, you know, I do have a 2 gigabyte thumb drive, it, it's an image, and on a 650 megabyte image, it's able to do all this. Also, on the inside, there are some uh, GNU uh, basic shell command-like tools. There is a development environment. This course is under active, active development. Uh, what happened is that... Uh, the B operating system was an operating system that was developed in a town that's just a few miles from where I am right now. I work in Palo Alto, and uh, BUS was developed in Menlo Park. Uh, it's the neighboring town or city next door. And um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Quit to leave the installer. It's installed. It is done. And when I boot into this, it is going to be just a terminal, and it's not going to give me any problems with my network card. It's going to be great. Um, why don't I just reboot now? I don't think I'm going to be able to get in here. Uh, I could use the B boot manager, but I risk... No, I think I'll use that. It actually works. And to get to, to boot man, it's not right here. They don't want to if it takes a little more technical skill, they hide it from the user, but it's still there. So it's called Bootman. Bootman. And say I want to install a boot menu, and uh, if something goes wrong, you can later wish to remove the boot. You simply run the Bootman program and choose uninstall. It's going to create a file actually. It saved the old master boot record. Now, here we go. There's NTFS volume, and I might even like, I'd, I might even end up using this because the grub is just drop dead ugly for one. It just, it's not any prettier than the one that's going to come up. And, uh, it, and in the second case, you know, half the boot entries aren't even working, so why do I care? And I know it's going to work nonetheless on um, SDA5 and let's see if it gives me a label here I know I have two different um, this this one here is probably just the swap file and another one's storage and 2.0 is the extended partition 2.0 that's going to be Ubuntu so I'm going to put that in there And this volume here, it's a riser that I don't even know if it's going to work. I think it's going to be Red Hat 7. This is a lot easier to use in Grub, I'll tell you that. And again, you know, it's just another advantage. This is the old Mandrake. God knows what, and I don't even know if it's going to actually work.
Um, this is just storage. That's a swap file. I don't th think I had BSD on here. I might have, but there we go. OS2. Well, that's not OS2. That is Windows 7. Next and default, I'll make Windows. And because I'm a Windows fanboy now. Did I have, do I have a boot entry for uh, Haiku? <laughs> yeah, I gotta label this thing. Haiku. I'm not gonna time out. I'm just gonna do that. Write the boot menu. I am done. And even though in the README it said that you needed to have, um, you absolutely had to have uh, grub to boot anything, but no. This boot man's working fine. I'm just gonna take out my zip disk, uh, my USB disk, so it'll actually not boot from there, but boot from the new menu that comes up. Last time I did this, yes, there we go. I could just try, I'll do Haiku first. There we go, there's Haiku, and see how beautifully the boot manager worked? A lot better than it did in SUSE, and I'm telling you, if I can get uh, a way to install as many apps as I want to and have available to me in Linux. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, Linux is going to be off my desktop. Okay, I'm going to stop here.